Thank you, Eden. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, choir. And friend, if you're here tonight and you don't know the Savior, that's our prayer, that tonight you will come to Jesus just the way that you are. If you've got a phone with you tonight, a mobile phone, would you just double check? And please ensure that it's switched off or it's on silent. And please, could we have no moving about unnecessarily during the ministry of God's Word? Would you please make Pastor McConnell welcome as he comes and ministers God's Word to us tonight? Thank you. All right, good. Will you turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, please? Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. And we'll begin to read at verse 31, Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning to read at verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And Peter said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And we'll turn to verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And we know tonight that the Lord will add a blessing to the reading of his word. Solemn words in this narrative. Father, shut us now in with your lovely self. May we be aware that you're among us, moving from seat to seat and from heart to heart. Glorify your name. That's all we're interested in, you being glorified. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said. It is a deep truth, though not the whole truth, that what we hear depends on what we are. The meaning which we find in any voice is largely determined by ourselves. Peter was not the only one that night who heard the shrilling summons of the cock crow. Through that tense night of agony, Many would be wakeful in Jerusalem. But for Peter, there was something in that note which was inaudible to anyone else. Peter heard it with the hearing of the soul. 
to the sufferer. It was companionable music, for it meant that the darkness of the night was passing. To the laborer, it was a sign and token that the toil of another day would soon begin. But to Peter, it was a swift reminder of his card ice and of his boasting and of the warning message of his Lord. And this is what never fails to amaze me about our Lord, the countless methods and ministries that he has to awaken us to our need of him. The cock crowing that morning was his special message to Peter, to no one else, to Peter, warning him of his sin and danger. If anyone here this evening would take the time to sit down and consider the ways and means by how we were saved and dealt with by the Lord, you would be astonished by the special method that the Holy Spirit used to bring you to Jesus. For while it is true that we are all saved by the same Savior and washed in the same precious blood and led by the same Holy Spirit, yet in each sense, our individual experience is different from each other and special to our own personal heart. Through the simple ministry of a cock crow, Peter was awakened to his need. This brings me to say, we should also note here what is so often true, how a simple, common thing can wake a memory. Our Lord wanted to waken Peter's memory, and he did it by the crowing of the cock. In the dark hour, when he was tricked and trapped, Peter had forgotten everything. He had forgotten his loyalty, and he had forgotten his love to Jesus. One might have thought that nothing but a mighty peal of thunder would awaken and arrest Peter's backslidden heart. But the Lord Jesus is wiser than our thoughts. There was no clap of thunder, nor was there startling fork lightning, just a cock crow familiar to Peter since he was a boy. What a marvelous person the Lord Jesus is. He knows our nature perfectly. He knows that memory is a light sleeper, startling awake at the very slightest knock. For instance, a waft of music or some familiar fragrance, and the past is all back with us again. How is your memory tonight? Mm. How is your memory tonight? Mm. How is your memory tonight? Do you remember how the Lord dealt with you? Do you remember how he spoke to you? And where are you tonight? Where are you spiritually? Are you right with God? Or are you away from God? I know people who accidentally found a scrap of paper or a little shoe and found themselves wandering through vanished years. And often when we have sinned and fallen and are in danger of having the hard heart, it is in such ways that memory awakes. We are told the cock crew and Peter remembered. Would the Holy Spirit be here tonight to bring to your mind some remembrance? Would the Holy Spirit be here tonight to deal with your heart and bring something that you prayed and said and something that you did and you haven't repented of? Is the Holy Spirit here tonight dealing with you? 
I believe this is one of the main reasons why the Lord Jesus instituted the Last Supper, or what we call the breaking of bread, or the Lord's Supper. And the secret of blessing and the secret of communion at that table is remembrance. That's what we come out to do, to remember. And if we stay in, we are not remembering. If we stay in, we are not remembering. Speaking reverently, all that is needed this evening is a piece of bread and a cup of wine upon the table and we remember the Lord's death till he come. Twice he said, this do in remembrance of me, not in remembrance of doctrine, not in remembrance of the church, this do in remembrance of me. And doesn't this prove that salvation is a personal thing? As Paul put it, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How are you and the Lord doing tonight? Remember when we were young, we used to talk about our love life. Now we're old. How's your love life with Christ? How's your love life with the Lord Jesus tonight? This do in remembrance of me. The bread speaks of his broken body. That body was broken. The wine speaks of his shed blood. Blood had to be shed. It had to be seen. It had to flow. But somewhere in that remembrance is a personal, private experience. Have you a personal, private experience? Oh, I just come to church, Pastor. Then you're not saved. And I say that kindly and lovingly. If you just come to church and you have no personal, private experience, you're not saved. To me, salvation is a crisis experience. Salvation is something that turns you inside out and upside down. It changes you. Have you had that? Do you want that? That's what salvation is all about. It's a personal, private experience known only to you and to God. And like Peter with the cock crowing, there is something in that supper, personal, private, exclusive, even secret, that awakens your memory and causes you to run to the nail-pierced feet of your Savior. At this table, there is a special method and ministry for every one of us in our personal lives that the Holy Spirit would use us to draw us closer to Jesus. But not only was the cock crow a note of warning for Peter, it was also a message of the highest hope for Peter. Brothers and sisters, there are birds which start their singing when the evening falls. But cock crow is the herald of the day. Mm. The cock was crying that morning. And the cock was crying that morning was at hand. It was the scout of sunrise. Its call was a clarion. That after the dark hours, there was going to be hopeful light again. And the master chose that token to tell Peter that his night was passing and that the dawn was going to redden the hills. Don't give up hope tonight. The master is here tonight to change your life. Don't despair tonight. If you call upon him, 
He's a wonderful Savior. He can do tremendous things in your life. I know what I'm talking about. He did it for me. And he does it all the time for me. He's wonderful. And the secret of that is a walk with Jesus. The secret of that is is a personal walk with him. It's a personal knowledge of him. It's a personal love to him. How are you tonight? See, years ago, when I was a boy, I used to hear people testifying. And they used to say this, I know Jesus as my personal savior. We don't hear that anymore. We hear him, I know Jesus as Lord. I know Jesus as savior. But I love that note. I know Jesus as my personal savior. The dawn was going to redden the hills. Peter had known the cock crow since his childhood. He had heard that note across the Sea of Galilee. After many a weary night of fishing, it had broken with reviving power on his ear as he came to land. And who can doubt it now? With all the bitter memories it awoke, it struck a chord of hope in Peter's heart. heart. The cock crew, and Peter remembered. Peter remembered. As the cock crew, it brought back to Peter's mind those incredible words of his Lord. Listen to this. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I was looking up the old Puritans the other day about this text. And instead of the word converted, this is what they put. And when thou hast turned, strengthen thy brethren. There's some of you Before you leave tonight, you need to turn. There's some believers here tonight. Before you leave, you need to turn. And when you're turned, when you're repented, strengthen. Strengthen, I pray. You cannot strengthen anyone until you have turned. Sinner though he was, there was going to be another day for Peter. He was going to have another opportunity of showing love and loyalty and service. Would you like another opportunity to show love and service? Would you like the Holy Spirit to come tonight to give you another opportunity to serve him? How will that happen if you yield to him? If you give yourself to him, he will give you another opportunity He will speak to you the second time like he did with Jonah. He will speak to you and he will revive you and he will strengthen you. That deep blending of memory and hope is the authentic touch of Jesus as we all find when we take the bread and the wine. Now granted, I want to say this and I've got to be careful what I say. Granted that at the table of the Lord, if we partake unworthily, there is chastisement, there is weakness, there is sickness. And the Greek has it, premature death. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, And many die prematurely. That's what was happening at Corinth. Because of their treatment of the Lord's table. Because of their treatment at that table. Because the Lord's table to him is special. The Lord's table to him is sacred. The Lord's table to him is that time on a Lord's Day morning or a Lord's Day night or whatever, that we get together with him and he's among us and he stands among us. 
Well, you're listening to me tonight, and I feel his presence. He's speaking to every heart here tonight, unsaved hearts, backslidden hearts, and the hearts that are tender toward him. Now, granted, as I said at this table, if we partake unworthily, his chastisement and weakness and sickness and even premature death. And this was the indictment that Paul leveled at the carnal Corinthians who were abusing and desecrating the Lord's Supper. This was the cock crow of danger and alarm to the Corinthians. But even in the warning of Paul to the Corinthians, there was a message of hope. What was the message of hope? Listen to me. Fair enough. Are you listening? If, if we partake unworthily, can mean chastisement, weakness, sickness, and premature death. What would happen if we would partake with the right spirit, the right attitude, and in the right place? Instead of weakness, strength. Instead of sickness, health. Instead of premature death, life with a capital L. People, you don't know what you're missing. Do you realize what you're doing and what's happening to you? And Paul said, for this cause, for this reason, many are weak and sickly among you. Even on same partake of this table. And that's what happens to them. But the warning of the cock crow tonight tells us there's a message of hope. The Lord's Supper is an ordinance which every child of God, from the oldest to the youngest, should observe. Here is the secret of the believer's strength and renewal. Lady, stop lying in on Lord's Day morning. Brother, stop lying in on Lord's Day morning. But be there, partake, and remember him. He's a wonderful Savior. Will you say, praise the Lord? Then the message of the cock crow has another thought. And you've listened to me well this past 20 minutes. The message of the cock crow has one more thought to teach us. Its teaching is in a contrast, and it's got to do with this word immediately. Immediately. Let me get a drink. We are told in John's Gospel, chapter 13, at the Lord's Supper, that Judas, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. And our text says in Luke, and immediately, while Peter spake, the cock crew. Here are two immediately. One who denies his Lord. One who betrays his Lord. Amen. Two immediately. And immediately it was night. And immediately the cock crew. Between Judas and Simon Peter, there was all the difference in the world. Judas was deliberate, calculating, and cold. Is that you, brother? Deliberate, calculating cold. You're on the road to a lost eternity, brother. Do you hear me? Are you deliberate, calculating cold, and yet you're in the church, and yet you partake of the church? You're on the road to a lost eternity. I'm your friend for telling you that. But Peter was impetuous. Oh, I'm talking to impetuous people tonight. He failed in temporary panic. And many of us have failed in temporary panic. Many of us have failed and we're so sorry that we have failed. And this was Peter. He failed in temporary panic. And Judas sinning 
went out into the night up in that upper room there was light because the light of the world was there and Judas went down the stairs and went out into the night it's not terrible he went out into the night and it was the symbol of his darkened spirit but Peter sinning heard the bird of morning he heard the bird of morning the one that made himself the child of darkness the other for all his sin was facing eastward Judas had let night into his heart before he went out into the night and a backslider he lets night into his heart before he goes out into the night and there's people listening to me tonight and you're going to drift look at me you've let night into your heart and you're going to go out into the night where will you be in eternity where will you be when the time comes for you to stand before God Judas had let night into his heart before he went out into the night but Peter for all the staggering of his card eyes loved his Lord with a passionate devotion and immediately when he had sinned he heard the cock crow says he went out and he wept bitterly I think I told you before if you look up the Greek word for the word wept it means he wept he wept he wept he wept he wept five times in the Greek that he wept as if he would never stop that's why Peter repented where are your tears tonight where are your tears? We have dry eyes seeking God these days. We have dry eyes going into empty rooms. We have dry eyes doing this. I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that. Where's the tears? Peter wept and wept and wept. And you know, it's strange in the Greek New Testament, when Judas kissed the Lord that night, says he kissed and kissed and kissed and kissed and kissed. As we would say in Ulster, he slobbered all over him. And he kissed him and kissed him and kissed him so that he would be identified to the chief priests and elders and to the temple police. Oh, brothers and sisters tonight, we need to get back to reality and we need to get back to that personal devotion with Jesus he heard the cock crew that, there was bitter memory in that but there was something more than bitter memory there was something that Judas never got there was the promise of another day There was the promise of another day. There was the promise of another day for Peter. Is there a promise of another day for you? But there was no promise of another day for Judas. Who unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed? It were better for him if he had never been born. The Master said these words. And I could feel the wrenching of his divine heart when he said it was better for that man if he had never been born. There was no better day for Judas. And that day dawned for Peter after the resurrection on the day called Pentecost. And Peter was restored to love and service. I want you to listen to this carefully. Let me get an order drink. I read of one of the caliphs who gave to his principal officers an honorable surname which was suggested by their qualities. If one of his officers pleased him, he gave him a surname. And uh, when he wished to show 
his dissatisfaction, he dropped the surname, calling him by their old names, and this would cause great alarm to the one he employed. When the officer resumed the employment, the surname would return, and it was a return and a sign to favor. Now, this custom helps us to understand why our Lord laid this stress on his servant's earlier name. Notice in our chapter he said, Simon, Simon. He didn't say Peter, Peter. He said, Simon, Simon. He didn't say Peter, Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He twice repeated it, showing Peter how he was going back to his old nature, to his old life, so he called him Simon. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you. See that word sift? Again, the old Puritans say that he may take you apart that he may pick on you, Peter, and take you apart and destroy you. He says, but I have prayed for thee. Isn't it lovely, brother? Isn't it lovely, sister, that there's one who's praying for us? People who say they're praying for me, that's nice, but doesn't fizz on me. There's one who stands in the glory and he prays for me. That fizzes on me. That's more important to me than anybody's prayers, because I know your prayers, because your prayers are like my own, the falter. But him, remember when he came to Lazarus' tomb, he says, take you away the stone. And oh, everybody's thrilled about the stone being taken away, and he calls out, but here's what thrills me. Here's what he says, Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me, and I know that you hear me always. It's not beautiful. Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me, and I know that you hear me always. I wonder how many times Jim McConnell has been mentioned in his presence. I wonder how many times David Purse has been mentioned in his presence. I wonder how many times my wee sister here has been mentioned in his presence. But I have prayed for thee. Isn't that lovely? That your faith fail not. And if he's praying for us, we'll go on. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Can I hear it again? If he's praying for you, you'll go on. That's why you read in Mark chapter 3 and verse 16, listen, and Simon, he surnamed Peter. You catch the meaning? And Simon, he surnamed Peter. And John in his account in chapter 1 and 42 says, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, but thou shalt be called Cephas, or Peter, which is by interpretation a small stone. Isn't that lovely? He changed his name. He gave him a surname. I often wonder, has the Lord got a name for me? I know some of you call me bishop. Some of you call me servant. Some of you call me other things. <laughs> but I wonder what he has for me and what he has for you. And Simon, he surnamed him Peter. Thou art Simon, the son of Jonas. But thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And by the way, Simon, do you know what Simon means, a reed? Do you know what a reed is? If the wind blows this way, it goes that way. If it blows that way, it goes this way. If it goes that way, it goes that way. A reed. And that's what some of you are like. You need the Holy Spirit to come into your lives and to do a mighty work within your lives. I want you to watch on the clock. You've listened to me now for 35 minutes. And I want you as a close to turn to Mark's gospel, chapter 16, 
verses 6 and 7. Listen to this. An angel described as a young man appears to Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome. And after telling them that the Lord has risen, note what he says. Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they led him. Now observe. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. Not Simon. Have you got it? But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. Not Simon. The surname's back again. Peter, you're back. You're back into the fold. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said to you. The angel was assuring Simon that he was not forgotten, that he was forgiven by giving him the name the Lord had surnamed by. Simon must have been thrilled Brother and sister, the master this evening is willing to forgive, is willing to restore, is willing to revive, is willing to meet your need. Do you hear me tonight? And if you forget everything else that I say, he is willing to forgive you if you only ask him. He is willing to cleanse you if you only ask him. He is willing to wash you if you only ask him. He is willing to help you if you only ask him. He's here and he loves you. He did it for Simon Peter. But brother and sister, do you want him to forgive you? Do you want to continue on in your unconfessed sin? Do you want to continue on in that backslidden state? Going on with him one month, in the world the next month? When Jesus comes, you're not going to rise to meet him in the air. Do you know that? You may say, oh, he might come in the month that I'm going on with him. That doesn't work. He looks for faithfulness. He looks for consistency. Oh, friend, tonight, will you come to him and will you trust him? Or do you prefer to live the way that you're living and yet in a crazy, stupid way, hold on to religion. It'll do you no good. It'll do you no good. It'll be no good for you. You need that personal experience with him. He's a wonderful savior. I know the failures of my ministry far better than most the sparring critic knows. <laughs> Listen, I resent those who criticize me and say I'm this and say I'm that. Brothers and sisters, I'm ten, te- I'm ten times worse what they call me. What he keeps me. He keeps me. He strengthens me. He encourages me. He's lovely. And he can keep you and he can strengthen you, and he can love you every day. Oh, the Holy Spirit's here. You could hear a pin drop in this house tonight. The Holy Spirit's here, and he's moving in hearts, and he's moving on lives. And while he yet speak, the cock crew and Peter remembered. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew and Peter remembered. Will you remember tonight? I know I'm talking to people. What about some honesty tonight? What about some sincerity tonight? Is there a man, is there a woman who will get right with God tonight? And will you do it for Jesus' sake? And everybody said, thank you for listening. Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer?
as Pastor McConnell has just said there, if you raised your hand tonight, and there was people who raised their hands in different places, if you raised your hand tonight, as soon as the service finishes, we encourage you and exhort you, go into the room, we call it the McGee room, and one or two of our pastors will be there with some literature for you. Get it, take it home, read it, listen to it, it will help you. And everybody said, let's stand together now, shall we? And Billy Behane is going <clears> to <throat> lead us in our closing worship. Let's just stay here. Let's just worship. And then we'll pronounce the benediction in a moment or two. God bless you. It was the word at the beginning. From with God the Lord was high. In glory in nation. And I revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name. Gracious Father, we thank you for our time together in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we can say tonight that once again salvation has come to this house. And gracious Lord, we bring to you, Lord, those that raise their hand. You see them right now. You know their heart. We ask you, Lord, do a work of grace within those hearts. We pray, Lord, for others that tonight are perhaps halting between two opinions. Lord, give them deciding grace. And gracious Lord, may we hear of others 
that have called on the name of the Lord. Now separate us with your blessing. Take us to our homes in peace and in safety. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain and abide upon us until Jesus comes again. Amen. Turn around and say hello. Good night, everyone. God bless. Now, wasn't that a fantastic service and inspiring message tonight? Now, as Pastor McConnell said, perhaps you're in your house and you raised your hand, or maybe even you didn't, but you do want to get saved, or perhaps you even have some questions that you would love to have answers for. We have an online pastor here ready to speak to you. His name is Pastor Erwin Ray, and here's a few things he has to say to you. We're absolutely thrilled this evening that you've logged on live stream here at the Metropolitan Tabernacle at Whitewell. As you know, for a number of years, we have been doing this ministry, but we feel that we want to reach out to you, dear sir and dear lady. As I say many times to people, the choir is silent, the preacher is silent, and the folks have gone home. The tabernacle is now empty, but the work of the Holy Ghost continues to go on. And whatever it is that's on your heart tonight or in your life, whether you're troubled about eternity, maybe you're ill in body, maybe at the point of despair, which brings me to Jairus, it says he was at the point of death. Whatever point you're at, Christ will meet you at the point of your need. We're here to help you. If we can talk with you, email, Skype, phone call, you will find all our contact details just after this little broadcast. The Lord bless you.